So they, on all the things that we're doing and uh, new things that we could do better. And a lot of the times we get ideas from citizens uh, like yourselves that tell us, hey, maybe we should do this in this department. It could work a little better. Um, and sometimes those things work. So I just want you to know that we try to make ourselves ex as accessible, especially my office, as possible. I'm also, uh, in my office, I started accepting interns. I actually had two intern uh, females from the Celebration High School. They did some um, volunteer work throughout the summer for, with me, and they learned a lot about how to be a politician <laughs> and what we do. Um, and I also get interns from the Valencia College as well as UCF. So I'm trying to get as much involvement. So if you have kids that want to do any volunteer work or internship in my office, I'm happy to take them because I think it's important that they learn very young how difficult this can all be. And so with that said, I'm going to um, actually pass it to our sheriff, and I would love him to do an introduction. Then we're going to talk together as to the different things that are being offered. Thank you. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm not sure that I really need the microphone. I'm sure everyone will hear me, but um, it's great to be here. Uh, Celebration is near and dear to my heart. Um, even though I don't live here in Celebration, I live in what I call a baby Celebration, which is Harmony, on the opposite side of the county. So they're trying and striving to be a little bit, and I say little because it's on a very small scale, kind of like Celebration. So, um, But this is what I always say, and you've heard me say it before, a diamond in a rough year, uh, Celebration. Uh, you're surrounded by elements up on West 192 that if those folks up there did not know that we had such a strong presence in your community, um, it could go really bad really quick for the folks that live here in celebration. That's not gonna happen. Um, our goal, number one, is the safety of our citizens. That's so paramount, it's un unmistakable. My number one concern is to make sure you're safe, to make sure the citizens in Point Siena are safe, citizens in Harmony are safe, citizens in Kissimmee in this entire county, uh, and that's what we're doing. Uh, we're working hand in hand with the uh, county commissioners and also our school board to avoid um, basically a debacle that was sent down from the state of Florida. It's almost an unfunded mandate uh, for our deputies in the schools. Children are our number one priority. They're our most valuable asset because in a few years, they'll be making decisions that affect you and me. And so they're worth every penny that we can actually spend to make sure that they're protected in their schools and to make sure that the teachers feel safe and secure enough to do their jobs, to prepare our children, your grandchildren, uh, for their life's journey. That's gonna affect us all. And so we wanna make sure that we're there for them, we're, we're uh, giving them everything that they need. And I had to put in 33 new deputies with this budget while cutting the budget and working with the county in order to make this work. Um, so cuts that were made, and these are things that we absolutely need in order to grow as an agency, were made, but it was done in order to get those 33 positions approved, as well as 12 other positions um, for, the, for the county, which substantially is going to be used here on the west side of the county and the south side of the county. The south sector, if you don't know, is Intercession City, Campbell City, Point Siena. The west side of the county is basically from Hoagland Boulevard all the way out to 27th. Um, so in, within those boundaries, of course, is celebration. Uh, one of the things when I took office in 2017 was that we needed a West Side Command Center, not a substation. We cannot have a substation. We have one of those now on Point Siena Boulevard, and that's not going to substantiate the growth that's going on out here in celebration, West 192, all the way out past Margaritaville that's being built out there. Margaritaville alone is going to bring in three to nine million visitors to Osceola County by itself. Phase one opens up in December. I went out and met with those folks out there. They had not had the first meeting with me to make sure that we had adequate uh, staffing as far as law enforcement goes to meet those needs. Um, that's poor planning on their part. And if anybody's here from Margaritaville, I'm sorry. Um, I had to take it upon myself to go out and meet with them to let them know the shortfall that we have. And we are preparing for that growth, even though they're not working with us, at least at that point they weren't. They are now. Um, because I pointed out those pitfalls and shortfalls that they were uh, having. So Six to nine million annually? Annually, that's yearly. So that's going to be huge. You already know the driving woes that we have, the traffic woes that we have. Uh, listen, if you have a car and you've been on the roads in Osceola County, you know it's bad. My car was hit three times uh, and Jerry's got a good heart. He's a good 
good uh, deputy, he's a great fit. Um, we also have his sergeant, Heath Yeager, uh, sitting right there beside of him, and a wealth of knowledge. Uh, Heath is, and also a great people person. Yes, sir. Sir, at this time, I'd like to commend, if you will, he is a centerpiece to this community, and I would like to have the community, if they would, give him a round of applause. Gary's great, and he possesses so much knowledge and information as a law enforcement officer that he can take on the uh, you know, the traffic woes that you have and the uh, burglaries and the retail thefts and whatever the case might be, when you call, Jerry's working, he's there. He's meant to be that community deputy for uh, celebration, almost exclusively. The only time that he's generally leaving that area is if we have like a, some sort of an alarm or something out on West 192 that he goes and backs up people for just for safety and security reasons. Uh, but also his sergeant, Heath Yeager's right here, and then we have Lieutenant Brad Butler over here standing up. Uh, and he's also a wealth of knowledge and also I brought uh, my attorney today who was a former prosecutor uh, for about 10 years at the state, uh, the 9th district here in Osceola County um, and he's prosecuted crimes from you know retail thefts all the way up to homicides. But not so, a lot here though. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not much of celebration. <laughs> Let's be honest, not a lot here. <laughs> uh, but uh, again, it's just an honor to serve. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Jerry Wineland, as long as we can, uh, my heart is to make sure that that deputy stays here exclusively for you all. Uh, it's not something that's coming from me or from anyone at my agency that we want to take Jerry out of uh, celebration. Uh, we love him being here. We know he's a great asset to the celebration. He's a great asset to the sheriff's office. And we appreciate him as much at the office as you do here in celebration. Um, so wherever he is, he's going to be a great fit. Yes, sir. So. Uh, Celebration funds, Jerry? Yes. Correct. So I'm curious about whether any other communities in Osceola County fund a, a deputy like we do here. They don't. The celebration is unique to do that, yes. Okay, so let's let's say let's say he was defunded somehow by celebration. Okay. So I'm curious about uh, then how your department allocates people on the beat or however you want to I mean would they do they have a territory to cover yep. or yes they do what they have a zone that they cover uh and that would celebration is within the the uh, coordinates of a zone uh so jerry is working eight hours a day ten hours a day whatever his schedule is the other time of the day you're not left with no one here okay. there are deputies that will patrol this zone which is inside a, a, a zone so how how large is this zone and how many officers are assigned to this zone well it depends on the population so okay. there's for instance, we have a zone out in uh, St. Cloud, just to give you a for instance, it's Yeehaw Junction. Anybody hear that? <laughs> so from St. Cloud, Yeehaw Junction is 55 miles south. We have one deputy that works down there in a zone that covers about 850 square miles. But it's be because of population. So what is what is the zone, how large is the zone that the Celebration is in? Well, Celebration is its own little city. It's, its own zone? It is not its own zone. Okay. It is within a zone. Celebration falls within a zone. And that zone is bounded by what? Basically from Point Siena Boulevard up past the I-4. And that's the geographical location over to 535 uh -huh. and over here, anything on this side of the north of uh, 192. And, and how many officers would be charged with patrolling at any one time that zone? Ultimately, we'd like to have seven deputies there. Is that how many you have now? Yes, it is. Okay. So at one time? When we don't have vacations or somebody calls in sick, it's called the human element. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, and in fact, I love Jerry as well. And yes, sir. My family's been in town for 22 years. Gotcha. We watched the, the school be built from the ground up. Yes, sir. Stand up. And we are currently funding Jerry's child, right? You're partial of it, yes. Partial. All of it. Mm -hmm. The CDD is funding it. CDD and ECD is funding it. They're, fa they're funding what, 90000 about $100,000. So uh, the CDD has a contract currently for $90,000 and it goes up 4% a year, uh, which pays for part of Jerry's actual salary. It actually doesn't cover all of the salary and benefits that are actually paid out for Jerry. The Sheriff's Office picks up uh, this past year, it will be about $35,000 that we pick up. Okay, so in effect, at some point as the 
population in this general area growth, including the six to nine million that are going to be coming? Visitors. Did We're not allowed to include that in our population, just so you know. Okay. They're coming, they're going to be driving rental cars, and they're going to be driving fast. Yes. Well, they're people. <laughs> How many people have received a ticket from Jerry for speeding That's in this room? <laughs> yeah, probably not enough. I'm sorry. I grew up in a, in a city with 30 million people, mm -hmm. and I watched it grow from 64 to 72 to 898, etc. So I know what it takes to keep a city safe, to keep a town safe, from small to large, from the population we have now to 30 million. I've watched Japan. Uh, rebuild their infrastructure. For, they're building it now for the fourth rebuilding for the fourth time. 64, 72, 98, now 2020 Olympics are, are going to be going to Tokyo again. Okay. So we need to kind of benchmark what they're doing, what they've done, how they've looked at things. We just watch like a three minute video clip and it'll give you a lot of information and ideas to try to repaint them. We absolutely have to repaint all of the lines the yellow, the, the white, and all the dots. And, and kind of go from there. It'll only take a few minutes. I'm not, I'm not sure I follow you at that point. <laughs> you lost me a little bit with the painting of the dots. You mean to redo the roads or? No, we need to redo the paint. All of the paint that's not there at any point. Some of the paint is there now because they've been repainted already. Some of the paint. I think that might have to do with the county question with one of our staff, but what I want to do and also make sure because it's an open forum, and the reason why sometimes I do table forums is because I want to give everyone a chance to speak to us, but since we're doing it this way, we want to make sure that other people are able to answer questions and not just have one question, one person ask all the questions. But what I'll do after is have a staff member speak to you about the lines, okay, if we paving or uh, painting. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, I'm Annika, I work for George, I manage George Town as a corporation and North Village, a condo community. I'm also a resident in Osceola County. The one thing between what the sheriff has said and what you have said that concerns me greatly is that with this great expansion within the county, I find it very troubling and worrying that yourself and your commissioners find that it is acceptable to cancel, to cut out important bits of his budget <coughs> that really as a member of the county and who pays our tax, who pays taxes yet, actually wants to know that he's fully funded to you know, to have and support us, not just my community and celebration and, and the folks that live here in this and make up the town, but all of us that are living in the county. And it really does it's very, very worrying that yourself and, and your colleagues feel that it's acceptable that that should happen. Okay. Um, what's your, you know, I'm interested to hear your answer to that. And Thank when you. the county actually plans in increasing the budget, if not the, for this coming year. Great, great question. And I'm glad you asked it because that was asked of me also online. This is why I brought this. First and foremost, let me tell you a little bit about my background so that you know why safety and security is very important to me as well, not just as a mother, but as an Osceola County resident as well. I used to be a federal officer. So I know firsthand that it is very critical that officers need the tools and devices and funding they need to protect us as families and protect our communities. So personally, I can tell you that um, there's not one commissioner on the board that is going to tell you that safety and security is not important to them because we all live in this county and all of us have families here. So it's very critical. The reason why I brought this, however, is because there was information going around saying that we defunded or took away funding from our sheriff's office, and that is not true. Uh, Osceola County actually has increased the sheriff's budget since he took office, both years. This past year, uh, when he, uh, first year, right? And then this year as well. Can we do more? Do we wanna do more? Of course we do. And we're always gonna wanna give more funding, not just to our sheriff, but also to our schools, for our children to go to school and to many other services that we do provide, such as our corrections, our animal services, our emergency management teams, and all our other uh, constitutionals that require funding from the county. We hate to take any services away. We don't want to do that. We also don't want to raise taxes. So one of the things that we've been doing as a board is we say, do we add on more millage and raise your taxes, or can we move around some funding, and are we increasing funding due to property values? The answer is yes, we're increasing property values, as you guys all know, 
uh, are, is increasing. When your property value increases, then we obviously get more tax from that. You add more tax from it. So it is not necessary always to raise your taxes. So that's what the board right now has been very conscious of doing. We've had several conversations. When we review our budget, so just so you know, I learned this as well just after I took office, is we actually review the budget almost all year because we review it every three months. We're talking about it with the staff. We're seeing what cuts are we gonna have to make? Do we have to increase our millage rate? And do we have to raise taxes? Do we have to charge you all more fees in order to provide the services we're currently providing? Uh, do we raise more tourist tax? Do we add another penny to something else? Like, we're always looking at those things. I'm not a fan of adding fees or raising taxes. I'll be honest with you, I'm not. Because I like the county to be good stewards of the money that we're getting in. So I don't like to see wasteful spending. So I've been one myself, personally, I can tell you that I've been trying my best to make sure, one second, that I've been trying my best to make sure that when I'm sitting with staff, I'm reviewing every line item and that the money is going where, where of course, our constituents want it to go. And one of it being safety and security, which is why we have raised the budget the past two years. And I think before that, I'm not sure if they have uh, prior to that. But, and I can tell you out of the dollar that we spent, there are state, state mandates, then of course money that's dedicated, and then our the constitutionals need the money, and then of course our public safety, which is not just his budget, it, it includes correctional corrections, animal services, and emergency management. So a lot of the dollar that you're contributing does go a lot to our safety and security uh, component in the county. So I, don't, I want you all to know very clearly that that is not our goal. Um, as a matter of fact, after Sheriff, uh, after Sheriff Gibson took office, we talked about the cameras that would be great for officers to have. We talked about all these other things that I know he wants to implement that has wonderful ideas, and we're getting there. And one of the other things he talked about was the West Side Station. That wasn't even a conversation before he came in. Like we, I think you have a great sheriff that is not only demanding on the safety and security, but you do have me on there that understands that he needs the tools, he needs to protect us. And I'm always trying my best to make sure that that's properly represented on the board. And so um, I want you all to know that. I, I want you guys to know that safety and security is very important to our board. And I think it shows it with the increases of budgets that we have been providing. And we, it's not just a million, we've been providing more than that every single, these past two years. Um, I think the sheriff could talk about a little bit more about the increases. So, okay. Was there a question back here? I just have one last question yeah. for you. Is that while you say, you know, nobody wants to pay more tax, I get that, none of us do. It's like asking others to increase your HOA fees. Yet we all had to do it. You know, to make your ends meet, your operational budget has to increase. And that's what happens, and hopefully, you know, it's appreciated that you guys and you and your colleagues try to, you know, not increase tax. However, as somebody who cannot vote from the county, so doesn't want to ask you, but have you tried a referendum actually asking everybody if we added, increased the sales tax by half a percent that went to your first responders, not just to the sheriff's office, but incorporate all our first responders? That then, of course, has the new people that are moving into the county, us that are already here, and plus all your visitors that are there. Yeah, How much great. money would that actually generate for the county as a whole? It would be great if the people agreed to that. I can but tell you that I did speak to... You know, it's just something to that, because some of your other counties in Seminole and what have you have done that to have to raise fees for their education and schools and what have you in the county. So there's something else you know, in the last 12 years. I'm not aware of you having any of them, your predecessors or currently, having even looked at that. Well, we, I have looked at it. I've actually spoken to citizens about it and, and in my town halls. I've requested what are the priorities from each of the communities that live in District 1. I've also asked and spoke about fees, not just the millage rate, but I've also emphasized and spoke about stormwater fees that perhaps we're going to have to increase. And I can tell you that in all of those meetings, I was asked not to raise <laughs> millage rates or uh, charge stormwater fees. But, tell you but, the but and how you prevent the question. Of course, and I will, I'm happy to ask it all every single time. Like right here, let's do a poll right now. How many of you okay with me today if I request for next year for us to raise our millage rate? Raise your hand. For what? Our millage rate. The, to raise the, uh, 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 for what? Yes, that's a key. Just raise. So our millage rate, our millage rate goes to our ad valorem taxes. 
So I just sold the journal. What are you going to use it? Can I show you my phone? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> my phone, I'm going to use this. So oh, well, one of the things I do want to say is that since coming into office, uh, we have been trying to, to look forward because we do see the growth that is coming, and we've been asking the questions, what is it that we can do? And so uh, we did research. We looked at Seminole County, Orange County, Brevard <coughs> County, other counties, and see how they're funding public safety. One of the things that we do not have in this county that most counties have is a impact fee for growth that pays specifically for public safety. So this county right now has that for fire safety, but doesn't have it for law enforcement. So uh, one of the things that we have talked to uh, the county manager about, and I know that uh, Commissioner Chowdhury has been on that conversation as well, is uh, having the county do a study to see if that is something that is feasible and that would work for the county. Uh, and so uh, you know, the sheriff uh, has had conversations with the county manager on that. Uh, obviously, we're open to that. Uh, one of the things that uh, we believe strongly is that growth should pay for growth. It should not be on the backs of the people who are already here. And so the hope is, is that the county will look at that, and that will help us fund uh, not only the, uh, the West Office uh, command post, uh, but also any other future growth, uh, such as adding more uh, deputies to the road. Um, one of the big things that we want to do is actually add more squads, which is your group of patrol deputies that actually do the patrols in the areas. So those are all the things that we are trying to do because we do see this growth and we know that it's going to be needed in this county, especially over on the West 1A2 corridor area. And the other thing on growth that I think is important, can everybody hear me and do, do we still need this? Oh, it's better? All right. Um, so the other thing on growth that I think is important, this past year also we've increased our new development, we've increased our credit, uh, our mobility fees, which is the same thing as impact fees. So new development is now paying more uh, on their impact fees than what they paid before. The other thing that was also increased was the school uh, impact fee. That was also increased. So there are elements where the commission has looked at and said we've got to increase for these purposes as we grow. And let me tell you, I'm not, I think it's important that if the majority of the citizens are okay with certain types of additions, like you said specifically what it's for, which I think is better, um, and they're okay with that, I'm okay with that. At the end of the day, I represent you guys. So the majority wants it, then that's what we'll do. But at the end, but that, that needs to then be clarified and made sure that everybody's on the same page with that. Uh, yes? So I think it would be helpful, when the sheriff was speaking, he said Osceola County is the second fastest growing county in Florida and the 10th in the nation. I was just wondering how much has his budget gone up? Is it in proportion to that kind of growth rate? I would yeah. suspect it's a whole lot less. So okay. I think we're getting less than we were five, eight years ago. So you know, I'm just trying to say if, if, we're, if we're on a growth rate like that, but the budget only goes up like that, we're, we're losing out. So I would say, so the answer is yes, we're not growing as fast as uh, the population grows. One of the problems that we specifically have in Osceola County is that uh, when we talk about the number of deputies per population, we only talk about the citizens. We don't talk about all the people who are living in hotels, who are not registered, we're not talking about visitors who come. So all those visitors that come, well, they still need to, to feel safe. But those funding numbers are not based on that. The other part of the problem, which, and I want to say that, you know, Thankfully, the county has worked with us. Is this unfunded mandate that came down from the state in regards to SROs? So what it is is that they got up and said we're going to give you know 400 million dollars to school resource officers. Well, the fact is is that the amount of money that the school district received to pay for all of the new deputies that we had to hire covered about 33 percent of the actual cost of those SROs. So what happened is is that the increase in budget, which was around seven percent, which is what we received this year in our budget. More than 50% of that was based solely on the SRO program because of the increases we need. Now, we all want the SROs in the schools. As someone who grew up here in Osceola County, I distinctly remember having SROs in the schools and the positive influence they had on me. So this is something from day one we've wanted. But what we had to do was working with the county, we cannot come in and say we need a 20% increase to our budget. It's not reasonable the, you know, for, for us to expect that from the county they would have to cut road maintenance and other issues and so we're going to be good stewards of the money and, and try to get some of that increase and so we did uh, ask for more deputies on the road in fact we asked for another dozen <coughs> deputies on the road and the long-term goal and we have a we have a five-year plan where we've looked at this is every year asking for more deputies in the past the number of deputies asked for each year was about 
eh, four, maybe five. Uh, but what this uh, commission has done is given us, I believe we got 10 last year, and we've got 12 this year plus 33 deputies for the SROs. Yep. So there are strides being made, uh, but it's the type of thing that we can't expect for it to be solved overnight. Mm -hmm. But know that you know we are thinking about these issues. Uh, we are game planning long term what it is that we need to do. Um, when we came into office, we had 47 deputy openings. Uh, when I checked last week, I believe we were at 10. And that's with all of the deputies that we've been increasing. And so we are doing everything possible to be able to add deputies to the road and to be doing everything that we need to be doing. And again, that's 10 deputies that, keep in mind, these are deputies that are retiring. There's uh, attrition that's going on. So we've hired almost 200 personnel in almost two years, not just deputies, but civilians and support as well. So it's a constant reflex or of people coming and going, and to keep up with that is very demanding, uh, but it's something that we're up for the challenge. We've in initiated a great recruiting department. We've talked to our military leaders uh, here in Central Florida. When people are being honorably discharged from the military, any branch of the service, and they have plans on returning to the Central Florida area, we're in contact with them, recruiting them. They serve their country. We give them first opportunity to continue serving right here in our community. And they're some of the best people that you can get. They already have duty, they have honor, they have, uh, they're reliable. And you know, what better person could we have to serve here locally than the people that were in the armed forces? Um, so it's an honor to do that. It's never been done in the history uh, of the sheriff's office, uh, at least in Osceola County. Um, so it's just thinking outside the box to try to get the best men and women here to uh, represent and to take care of the citizens because I'm one of those citizens. My son's 21, he drives. My daughter's 12, she goes to schools here. Uh, my wife is uh, born and raised here in Osceola County. Uh, although I wasn't, I'm, I'm a Buckeye like this woman over here, so. <laughs> oh, <age. laughs> Go ahead, sir. I commend oh. everything that you've been doing. Yes, sir. Okay, and I understand that what's been explained is that we have a shortage of recruits and how long it takes to become a deputy and be put on the road. But I don't understand the calculus of the fact that we're only based upon citizens. If we have hotel rooms and people are in them, that is a population of which needs to be protected mm -hmm. and for safety. And, and, and that's what I'm confused now is the fact that we're basing either a budget or a coverage zone or whatever on citizenship in the county and not what is physically present here. And that's what I just need you to, if you could clarify. And, and, and please let me. So first off, I understand the plans. Uh, Mike knows this. I'm, I'm currently in the Hope Center. So I have to corridor. Uh, and so when I'm talking about that is, is that in general, in law enforcement and in government, uh, the numbers that you look at is your deputies per population. And so what we've had to do, because this didn't happen before, is we've been trying to educate the county as to, hey, we, you just can't look at the population numbers. You need to look at the population, including all the people who are visiting, because we need to make sure that we're protecting them as well. And so when we do talk about these numbers, that's what's got the conversation going. This is why in the two years that uh, the sheriff has been in office on this budget, we've seen larger increases in the number of deputies that we've received budgeting for because we've actually had that initial, hey, you guys have been told this, but we actually need to start considering all of these tourists and that the number is not really a 2.4 or 2.6 ratio. It's actually more like a 1.5. And so we've had those discussions and like I said, working with the county, I mean, they understand it and we're working towards that, that goal of getting those numbers up. And we are, we're actually increasing our numbers. Um, you know, and again, we're gonna, and next year, we're gonna be asking for more deputies. And we've been talking, we've already started the conversation with the county, even before this last budget was put in place that, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do these numbers this year and 33 of them are for SROs. But know that next year, we're gonna be coming back for another 40, or 50 deputies because we know the growth that is coming and we know the need that is there. Um, and that partly goes with, again, having that West office. Not um, a substation. Not a substation, office. A West command. Yeah, you know, we plan on putting yep. right now 150 uh, personnel in that uh, office. 
Now that's going to include both control, that's going to include CID, that's going to include administration, and there's also going to be lots of uh, parts there such as uh, a space for our evidence unit and other things because one of the things we want to do is make it as efficient as possible so that our deputies and detectives can get in there and out as, as fast as possible so that they're in your neighborhoods and in your areas longer. Right now, if we have someone who has to go to jail, what are they going to do? they got to trek all the way across town and, and book them in Simpson. The plan for us is to have a small holding area for deputies, and then what we'll do is we'll collect three, four of them. Kind of like a paddy wagon. Kind of like a paddy wagon, and then transport. So what does that mean? That means we got three more deputies who are back on the road patrolling instead of having all four of them having to drive to Simpson Road and then sit at the jail and wait an hour and a half to two hours while we do the booking process. So when we talk about the future, all of these things are small little things that we're hoping to add up to more efficiencies within the office. And there was a, sorry, the gentleman over yeah, there was waiting. Right, you're talking about trying to save money and budget money correctly, but why is there talk about spending $570,000 to resurface all of downtown when it's already been done? I'm gonna actually go to my staff to answer that question one second. May I ask a question before you go into that on the subject that we we're talking about? Do you want to stay on the same subject? Um, so basically, my question is: Given the building that's going on around Osceola County, houses and stuff are growing up like mushrooms all over the place. Most of these areas were either pastures or uh, agricultural or whatever, which were generating practically no benefit dollar-wise to the county. Now that they are turning into a real estate, which turn, which is going to end up paying real estate taxes, how will that positively affect the budget? Putting aside that you know expenses are going to be there, has that been costly? Two limit? total different questions. Let let me let just finish with the first gentleman, then we'll go to your question. Okay, so just to be fair, go ahead. Yeah, I think the initial question was about um, the $600. Hi, I'm Dave Tom. Can you hear him? Hi, Dave. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I know that, but now you're all. I've got to give the intro, right? Um, so, so base, basically, we resurfaced the initial part of Celebration Avenue a couple of years ago. Um, when we did that, um, we got some complaints about the way we striped it. Um, so what we did was we hired some folks, professional engineers, to look at how we striped it, how we could restripe it, based on the character of the celebration area, still be safe. So we wouldn't be resurfacing. Um, the intent is to, now that we have the study completed, to look for other sources of funding. It's not going to compete with your resur uh, resurfacing funds. Uh, we've got Celebration Boulevard scheduled, and we've got the rest of Celebration Avenue scheduled this year. That That's your resurfacing dollars. That'll continue. Um, we'll look for grants. There's grants for um, communities like Celebration where you've got a special character that we've got to do some things with some mediums and stuff to make it fit the character. Of the okay, so, so what you're saying is you're not redoing it. You're going to continue on from the other side yes, out sir. in Celebration Boulevard. So that five hundred seventy thousand dollars rumor that's going around that you're going to redo it, going to urbanize it because a few people don't like the stripes. That's not true. Well, yeah, that's... So we're going to be looking for grants to look at the striping, to look at some median treatments and things of that right. nature. That so you're trying to put in bike lanes now. You're trying to shorten our lanes from 10, uh, 10 feet wide to 9 feet wide and take away the left-hand turn signals, which are more likely, three times, more likely to be rear-ended if without a left-hand turn lane. And you're trying to take all that away so you can put in some bike lanes so a family can be riding their child, you know, riding with their child on that lane, have a truck or a bus, or the way some people drive through here, that child swerves out a little bit and gets hit. That's what you're trying to set up. No, um, actually, we, we hired an engineering company. Yeah, the engineering the engineer that you, you hired, the rumors going around that he part of the company has got to resurface and redo that. No, area. no, that's not <laughs> it at all. They're actually, they're actually um, operational engineers, so. Right. They, yeah, they, they don't, they're not the ones that come what out and actually the, do What about the research that was done years Sorry. ago saying that the way it's set up right now is the way it should be set up. It should not be changed in any way. Okay, that's the, let, let him finish answering okay. your question. Because again, guys, we're doing it open. So there's like several people more that have questions. And it's not fair if we just answer all the rumors. Right. Okay, so let him finish. And then well, I know that other gentleman's around, waiting. And I understand that. But let, going around. We'll okay, let him finish out. with the question. Well, Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think what you're trying to get to, though, is... 
we're not taking resurfacing money for it. Um, it will be safe. Right. Whatever we do will we'll continue the character of celebration. So it'll be both safe and continue the character. The other thing is, is once we actually find a funding source for the Celebration Avenue middle of downtown, um, we'll, we'll actually hold another workshop with the community and go over, um, make sure that everybody's still on board with that. So okay. we'll keep trying to have town halls. So just so everyone knows, this is, I guess this is not working. Um, <laughs> just so everyone knows, we do have town, I will continue to have town halls here. So this will not be the last opportunity on issues like that as they come about in the county. Um, to definitely address it. And the other thing I do encourage is emails. If you ever have a question about such things like that, we've got Tony, that's the head of the Department of Transportation here, uh, Dave, as you all know, Dave Tomac, and we also have code enforcement, Tom's here. So please collect their uh, business cards, and if you have specific questions, especially when it comes to rumors or what you hear, I think it's important that perhaps you go straight uh, to the county and just ask those questions directly so that you can get an answer uh, via email, and sometimes they're not so black and white because there's sometimes studies being done or something to that degree, and not necessarily that something is going to get done. I mean, that's just what I learned. Now, sir, you had said that what the impact is gonna be with everyone that is developing here. All over the place. Actually. Right, East, well. West, north, south, all over. Right, you're well, getting more real estate money. Right, and that is true. Money. So everyone that, that comes as pays like everybody else, you know? So everyone, as they move in here, we're gonna have more ad valorem tax. Yes, it is gonna grow, just like Orlando did, for example, Orange County did. They're at like a $4 billion budget, and we're at a $1.2 billion budget. So yes, it's gonna continue growing. I guess that's the good thing, right, as people do move in. Now also, that does pertain to all the, um, when tourists do come and the money that they do spend in our county um, also does contribute, you know, in some way. So, of course, growth in that perspective will help. And also your property values. If people do move in, you've got nice property, and this community is one of, I, I would say, is one of the best communities that when it comes to um, the, a person coming and feeling not only safe, but like in and walk walkability and all that stuff. So you have a great community. So I don't see the values going down as that's going up. So that does help as well. So growth does bring other things like that. And it's just, you know, like any other. Um, well, my community. question was actually for the increase in the positive side of the income. How is that going to be spent? Is that going to add another sheriff in celebration for instance? I'm trying, I, I would have to get you the, the answer to see what the percentages on increase for the next coming year or what we're expecting it to be because I don't know it off the top of my head. Do you know by any chance what the increase would be? Yeah. With the growth pattern? So, you know, each year it grows a certain percentage, which, which you need to realize also is that it depends upon what type of growth you have. So, for instance, in, when it comes to public safety, you know, one of the things that we've been pushing is not having uh, as many homes that are under $250,000 being built. I understand that we need affordable housing, and that's good, but when your average house doesn't cost that much, it actually is a, dra it is a drain actually on the public safety uh, dollar. So for instance, I believe the county's done a study that says that any home that is built with a, a taxable value of less than $250,000 actually costs the county money when it comes to public safety. And so although growth is great, there is an inherent cost to the growth that it takes. And so that's why it's important to have impact fees to help pay for that new growth that's coming. Um, and I believe that this past year was an eight or nine percent increase in property values. It was over ten. Yeah, was ten percent is what I was just told. Yeah, it's ten percent uh, value evaluation for growth. So that's what we'll see. Okay, I know you patiently waited. Did you already ask a question? Did. You did. Can I ask someone else first before we go to the thing? Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, Jeffrey Mount, I'm with Celebration. Hi, Jeffrey. I, I want to thank you particularly for um, hiring the engineers that you hired with Dave Tomek's leadership in doing the analysis on Celebration Avenue, because I think it, it is a correction to what went wrong a couple of years ago. Right. And it is, will apply to other streets, so that's a great move forward, and I appreciate you working with the CCDD on that. That's a really positive thing. Um, back on the subject of financing the public safety, is there any way to target the tourist dollar specifically, rather than residents that already live here and actually pay a little extra for, for high security in our town? Is there any way to, to sort of get the dollars from the tourist zone? And hopefully you'll give it to people. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> well, it would be great, and yeah, it would be great because.
because obviously everyone says, well, they're impacting us, right? T tourists are impacting us, obviously, with the growth. Um, the issue is that tourist development uh, taxes are collected for specific purposes. Um, and it is by uh, Florida statute that it is collected for that purpose and that purpose only. And it has to pertain to tourism um, developments and activities. And so the county has looked at different things and said, okay, well, if this is a proposal, can we use tax dollars for something? Can we? Now, I can tell you that a lot of our attractions and hotels that do collect these funds, they're okay with us um, when we're doing things that, that are going to be putting heads in beds, let's just say. That's the kind of the terminology that they use. And I, I'm actually uh, in, in hospitality myself, so I collected tourist tax dollars. So I know it's not easy to collect them from tourists, but when it is collected, it's collected for a purpose. The tourists understand why they're paying it, and so do the collectors. And by the way, as a collector, I will tell you, this was before me and before I became a collector of those uh, TDT funds, but the reason why that's even there is because the attractions and a hotel, I'm sorry, the hotels specifically put those taxes on themselves for the sole purpose of uh, tourist development dollars to go into specific places, such as marketing the destination so that more people would come to stay in their hotels so and things security. like that. So nothing is security or safety? No, not at this time. Am I correct? Nothing's no, changed. Right. Nothing has changed in legislation That's at true. this time about that. So, zero percent, zero dollars so, from the tourists end up. So, you, per, you per, the safety of the children in, in our town. Sir, per Florida statute, please understand, this is not something that we have done. Absolutely. Absolutely. We could all, you guys could all get together, go to Tallahassee. That would be a great fun bus trip. <laughs> okay, so let me go to somebody else. Um, so the, the potential of getting dollars from the tourists is through penny uh, tax in Tallahassee. State legislation. It's the state legislation. Okay, so let me tell you what hotels, just to give you an example, okay, because I was a hoteler, so I can tell you this from experience. So I paid several taxes. It wasn't just one. It wasn't just tourist tax dollars that I had to collect from every tourist that came and stayed in the room. And it was for the sole purposes of tourist tax dollar issues, such as marketing and things like that. I also paid ad valorem tax, like everybody else in this room, for the property. I had to pay that. I also paid sales tax. Yeah. I also paid the employee tax. I also had, so all the taxes, ad valorem taxes that you pay to go to your security, right? I paid for it too as a property owner. So, and I paid for it at my home as well in Osceola County. So please understand, a lot of times people confuse, they think that hotels are just collecting that, that penny and that it should go to this or whatever. Um, but they're also paying their ad valorem tax, like property owners, like anybody else. So that ad valorem tax goes towards safety, security, and other um, other ad valorem, just like everyone else that pays it. So I just wanted to, just in case you didn't know that, um, but can you guys make a difference? Hey, numbers makes a difference. Just like I said, it's legislation. Okay, that gentleman was very patient back there. I want to get to you. Sorry. It just seems to me that, uh, you know, District 1, that a lot most of the incremental revenue that is coming into the county is coming from district wise. I agree. Margaritaville. I agree. Vacation village. I agree. They don't, they don't have kids in schools. So we I agree. Massive amount of money coming in into Osceola County in district one. And I guess my concern has been, and it sounds like maybe it's starting to change, but you know, we have always been the last one to get something from the county. So we were the last one to get a, a library. Uh, district. Uh, you know, the police being way out in Point Siena Boulevard is just ridiculous. But we still we still have huge problems. I mean, I don't I don't I don't go to the mobile station on 192 because it's not safe. So, you know, if if you can fight for the fact that listen, we're, the money's coming in here. Margarita Bill's bringing in a ton of money and a ton of problems. We need to get a lot more people out here on this side of the of the county. I, you know. I, I definitely appreciate it. So I, you know, I hear you talking about having a distance, uh, just moving the office, which is good, but we need, we need people on the street. And well, the and just, just moving the, the office isn't there. enough. You're right about that. And our contingency plan is to put people in place. And that was the meaning behind me going to Margaritaville. I just happened to meet with their board of directors who was happened to have a, 
a meeting that day. It wasn't set up. I went unannounced. Uh, and I went in and addressed them as a group and told them that. I explained to them that out in that particular zone, at any particular time of the day, because of the activity that we have out there, you have basically two or three deputies during the day, two or three deputies at night, just from that little uh, quadrant of the county. However, with that many uh, tourists coming into uh, Margaritaville, we were going to require probably 20 to 25 deputies around the clock, 24 7, 365. And did, I, did they think that two or three deputies out there with all the tourists that they're going to have, would that be enough? Their mouths hit the floor. Why? Because they left the most important partner that they have out of the equation when they're making their plans, and that is their law enforcement agency. And I explained to them under no uncertain terms that if we had another tragic uh, terrorist attack like we had at the Pulse, which is right in our backyard, happen here at their Margaritaville, they're out of business. Yes. They're out of business. And again, they were stifled and dumbfounded by simple common sense and logic. And that's what I brought to them. And I asked them to stand with me, stand behind me, not just when we meet with Commissioner Chowdhury. Commissioner Chowdhury represents you in District 1, 100%. But there's, other, there's four other districts, and one of the things that I've met with those county commissioners on an individual basis and explained to them that even though they're in District 2, 3, 4, and 5, decisions that they make affect the entire county, not just their district. And so in order to get something passed through that, you guys know, I'm preaching to the choir, I'm sure, three votes you need to get something done, and, and that's where... And, and that. again, I think all of, you, all of you have been involved in boards, you know exactly how boards work, I am fighting every day for District 1, fighting the fact that we are, we're, on, we're always being forgotten. That's why I was running for office. Um, the fact that we're not getting assistance like we should. The fact that we are one of the biggest, the biggest tax base for the entire county and it should come back to our district, to all our communities in the district that contribute to it and that suffer through it. Because I'm in traffic every day, just like all of us, and I see things every day, just like all of you. So trust that I am, uh, but as a, a good sheriff said, you know, I've got to, the, it's, there's a board, and, and three votes count on those boards. It's very critical that I get more participation sometimes also from my district residents if you could help me, because sometimes hearing it from me over and over, sometimes it's just, it's one ear out the other. But you know what, from all of us working together is what things can potentially get done. And, but rest assured that slowly in the last, I mean, it's been almost two years in November, and you could already see the changes. So I do want to thank my board for at least us doing somewhat of the changes, and we're moving in the up pattern, you know, uh, uphill battle, but we're moving up there. And our sheriff has done a great job and you know, lobbying and speaking for our district. So I want you guys to know that you've got a great team here. We're trying our best to do it, and you've got an awesome sheriff when it comes to safety and security. It's just gonna take a little while to get there, which by the way, I myself don't have patience for. I'm learning I have to have it, especially with politics, but I'm trying to get there faster. I know you had one more question, just right? Follow up. Is Marjorie gonna have to pay for their own deputies the way we have to pay for them? If they want deputies on their property, they're gonna have to they pay will. Them. Yeah. Oh yes, I, yes we will make sure of that. <laughs> Um, this gentleman's been waiting. Let me see uh, him. Then I've got a couple comments. Tax office, licenses. Yes, great. I wanted I to bring that I up. I just went three day trips to go through. <laughs> I know. I love to take three day trips. You are so right. I have to go there and it's dreaded. We're older. Uh, the, other, the other comment is we gave our, our uh, email address. You can also come. Yes, sir. Send me. Email. Can you send out an email address for each of these individuals? Oh, the contact information? Yeah. It's okay. online, too. And it's also online, but I'll, I'll send it to, uh, if you want to put a star on your name, I'm happy, or to anyone else. Anne is right there, my assistant. She could make sure. Hold the Osceola Park list. Really. <laughs> 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 they have been here forever. That's been there for us. <laughs> from a layman's point of view, because I don't have anything to do with that, the more red lights and communities that are built on there, yeah. the more they should take the booth out of it. Yeah. 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 That's something I'm happy to fight with all of you guys to go back to the county because I wasn't there when that was implemented. But And, and by the way, on your comment with tax collector, actually, these are conversations I have with the sheriff. I said, hey, when you have your office here, can we talk about putting stuff Offices of the supervisor of election of tax, you know. So we're talking every single day uh, with the, 
the different, uh, with the sheriff and also with the tax collector and with the supervisor of election, trying to see how could we have more things done here, including another voting area that we're going to need here and stuff like that. So, and another school for the kids. I mean, we have a lot of growth. In this, as we grow with the tourism in, the, in our district, because we're very unique with that, uh, we're also growing with the residents because they love it so much and they come, right? And, and how do you tell mom and dad you can't move here? You know, you don't really do that. So I'm trying. We're we're trying to move forward in that direction. But don't rest assured that we've been arguing that matter also with the tax collector and all that. And actually, there is a building that was just approved this year um, that is a little. It's not actually two ways from here, but it is in District 1 where we're going to have a new tax uh, collector office. It's going to be on Poinciana, like towards Tampa, where inter uh, Tampa Avenue, towards uh, Intercession City area, which was also lacking lots of uh, different services and stuff. So rest assured we're looking at, I'm looking specifically at all this, but I welcome anyone to, to definitely come and join me in my Citizens Committee <laughs> to help me fight some of these battles. And I told you that. Go ahead. Um, I believe in the past the development district has also supplemented some of the sheriff presence for Halloween. And if I heard correctly this morning in another meeting, I was I think I learned that that won't be the case this year. We'll have extra deputies, as many as we can put out here, and we're also going to be covering your intersections, too. Okay. Uh, I think that was one of the major, major concerns was the crossing of the streets and so forth. And I know that you all get inundated with uh, trick-or-treaters um, because you give up your candy. Because you give up great <laughs> candy. Stop giving out those big bars. No, I'm just kidding. No, but absolutely. We're going to do our very best. We will have extra patrol inside of uh, celebration and again we're going to have all your intersections covered as well so that's something that, and i'm i'm going to apologize to you now before oh, i catch yeah, up definitely. i do have to run to another meeting guys and uh but i'm happy to come to any meeting that you have uh, this isn't the one time that you get to uh, meet with me talk with me ask me questions whatnot you can do that anytime at any one of your meetings um, just get that information to me and i make myself available to you I'm here to serve you. I can tell you that we have a great organization. You have a great organization at the Osceola Sheriff's Office because it belongs to you. It doesn't belong to me. It's your office. I'm doing everything that I possibly can to work with our county commissioners and they're working with us. But the idea is, is that we're playing catch up from, from growth that has been happening in the county, not just this past almost two years that I've been the sheriff, but for the past 12 years that I've also worked at the office but hadn't seen any growth really, to speak of, but the county's been growing out of bounds. And so what we're tasked with and doing is understanding that growth and then now chasing our tails a little bit, but we're gonna catch it. And we're gonna catch that tail and we're going to get that agency up to par, and we are. We're making tremendous leaps and bounds and tremendous strides to make sure that we have coverage for all of the West Side Corridor and for the population that we have, we're moving up to that. The 12 new deputies that we've been approved for, besides the 33 SROs, are going to be basically here on the West Side Corridor and down in Sector 3, which is Campbell City, Intercession City, which at a moment's notice, they get that call. Believe me, those troops are coming up here too. So it doesn't matter what boat we got here on. I guess Martin Luther King had said that, and it sticks to me very closely. We're all in the same boat now. And that's to make sure that you're safe, you're secure. You have dedicated men and women at the Osceola Sheriff's Office who fight crime day in and day out, and they do a tremendous job. Why? Because their hearts are in it, and they're in it for the right reason. They're not there to get rich, although they, they would love that. <laughs> you know, but they're there to make a difference in the community that they serve, and they're doing that every single day. And, and that's not without mistakes, and that's just part of the human element. But I promise you is that your protection, your safety is number one concern not just for me, but for the entire agency as a whole. Uh, and that's what we're committed to doing. Uh, I'm going to leave you in good hands, though, with Lieutenant Butler, with Sergeant Yeager, and of course, you all know Jerry. And, uh, and also uh, Rob Holborn. Uh, intricate workings of the office. Um, he's with me every step of the way. So these are questions that, if you have, that he'll be able to answer in my stead. And again, I'm happy to meet with you anytime. I'll be back out here tomorrow night for the uh, Yorktown. Correct. Yorktown. So I may be flying in on helicopter because the traffic's so bad. <laughs> no, but I have three places that I have to go to, and uh, but this is one of my stops here. So if you have a moment to come out to the National Night Out over there tomorrow, come on by and, and chat with me. I'd love to see you. And if you're over by the office, the main office, stop in and take a tour. It's your office. See how things are run. We have the most modern technology there. People come from Orlando, they come from Orange County, and they think that we're easy pickings. And I'm telling you, they get caught. 
because of the men and women that we have employed at the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. And we use every technique that we possibly can. Modern technology is our friend at the Sheriff's Office. We have trained the Florida Department of Law Enforcement forensics technicians on how to collect uh, evidence that's touch DNA evidence, how to actually look at it and see what's valuable and what's not. That is from your forensics team here at the Osceola Sheriff's Office. Um, so we use everything that we possibly can to make sure that we, we make people accountable when they commit a crime down here. And I know that some of these thugs have said to their compadres, because it's recorded, we should not have come to Osceola County. I told you, because that's the dedication the men and women here have. I'm so proud to be a part of the Osceola Sheriff's Office since 1986, and I'm proud to serve as your sheriff here. Again, mistakes will happen here and there, but as a whole, we'll learn from those. They'll be minimal at best, and we're gonna move on as a, as a whole. And as a group, we're only gonna get better, we're only gonna get stronger, and as a community, there's nothing that we can't do. So I want you all to have a good night, and I've got to run. I apologize. A team of round of applause. That's one dedicated sheriff we have. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, so as the, as the sheriff leaves, if there's any other questions uh, for the sheriff's department, that there are more. There, there are more here. But you, did you ask a question yet? Not yet. No, okay. I just, the question I have is, uh, what is the metrics used for the crime rate and the detective solve rate. I mean, has it increased? Has it, gotten, has it increased? Has it gotten better? Has it flattened over the years? So, super complicated question <laughs> that I certainly cannot answer in, in a 30 second uh, bit. But let me, so it's all based on UCR data. Right. And so, there's lots of different types of crime and it depends upon where you're talking about. Let's talk about and so, and so the problem is I don't know what those numbers are just because I didn't know that was going to be a question. Uh, it was other stuff. So what I will do is make sure that I get uh, your contact info, anything you want to ask, and get your answer. Okay. Thank you. I can tell you that our robbery unit, which is based out of our, our west office, they're usually in the 90% solve rate for robberies in this area. Yeah, and, and I will tell you, so I spent uh, 10 years here in Osceola County prosecuting cases, and the robbery unit here is amazing. Uh, most of the stuff that we had wasn't in celebration. It's literally along 192, and then out by the, um, out west towards the, the border, that gets hit a lot. And it was amazing how many cases we would get, and just how many solved. I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal the work they did, and the sheriff talked about some of the technology that uh, we've used, and they are always on the forefront of, of using that. And you know, the, 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 the thing nowadays is cell phones and uh, video cameras. And one of the, the nice things about our department here is that we are very good with cell phone technology. And uh, I, I just, you know, it's made law enforcement a lot easier when it comes to you know, having GPS and good tracking. Did you go ahead? Yeah. I, on the light bar, I'm talking to the gentleman over up there about being safe, going back and forth, and going actually get a little to the old station. As a resident, and a lot of residents are here that travel these roads. I drive in and out all the time. I'm retired. I don't feel safe there when these roads. How many times I have come to a stop sign and people roll through the stop sign that don't even stop before the white line and then roll to see because they may not be able to see where they're going. I feel that that, that, that goes was just coming out. That happens every single day. We have the same thing with bicyclists. The bicyclists do not know the rules of the road. They're on the road with you three times this week on the right hand side. Bicyclist comes up beside me, doesn't stop at the stop sign. I'm making the right hand turn. Who's at fault if I hit him? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, these are the things that Jerry? <laughs> Jerry? And on and on and on. I had this conversation with Jerry. You can't park in the intersection. You can't block the road. You can't be in the crosswalk. You can't park the wrong way. Where do these people come from? They have to the regulations in their state. They come here, it's like Lalo Land. I can do anything in celebration. I have a, a kind of a theory on that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jerry. Go ahead. You've got to enforce it. I don't this, care. This part of Central Florida is the highest rental car place in the world. Uh, I have a huge problem with Avis and Budget and all these other companies. Somebody stepping off the plane from God only knows what country 
and I go, welcome to Orlando, here's your rental card. <laughs> we are giving them a 3,000 pound missile because they have a credit card to pay for that. They don't know the rules of the road in, in their country, let alone coming into our country. That's something that I think we should work on, get with your state legislators, and work out a way that we can give them maybe a basic rules of the road test before they pick up their rental car. If you remember back in the old days, they, they'd come out to your car and show you where the turn signals are. Anybody ride a car lately? They say it's out in V4, go pick it up. <laughs> they show it up. How many cars do you see out there without headlights on? Most of those are tourists that have no clue how to turn on their headlights. So that, that's a huge issue, very unique to this area. You know, and that's that's not counting the residents, and I will get you at one point in time. <laughs> so again, you know, you're in your own worst enemy. If you want me to zero tolerance on traffic stops, but I'm going to get have you coming out of the parking lot tonight. So you know, and for, for that, I'm not making excuses, and, and, I'm, and I don't make jokes, but uh, I'm somewhat lenient when I have to be on, on traffic. Uh, there's a state law that allows us discretion. Everybody doesn't have to get a ticket. The sheriff can't tell me to write everybody a ticket either. That's that. It's up to me when I make that stop. Based on the violation, you might get a warning. Warnings in our county, that puts your name and your vehicle both in my system. If I stop you a second time, you're getting a ticket, I'll guarantee it. No, no sob stories, because you, you've already been warned. And that's kind of my theory on it. If you do something so egregious right from the get-go, you're getting a ticket right from the start. Believe me, you will. Okay, I have no problem. I believe you. I think you gave me a ticket a few days ago. I'll look that up in the system. <laughs> Um, and you're right, you know, with tourists do come other issues like this. And, and I think it also happens, Joe, in other tourism areas, like in Miami and Vegas, you know, maybe not as much. I don't know the ratio or anything, but I think when you're dealing, obviously, with tourists, they don't really understand all the rules, regulations, maybe not even speak the language, not understand the stop sign. So, but it is not great. It's bad, of course, but that unfortunately comes with the tour tourist living in a tourism area. Let me get to someone who has not answered, asked a question. Go ahead. Commissioner Chadwick, your staff, first, thank you very much for coming and thank you for this structure. Even though it's a little chaotic, it works well. Yeah. Two times. <laughs> um, we, we're building an athletic complex here. Um, change, hopefully, a change to the ordinance is going through and we're looking at some reimbursement dollars, so we'd love to comment on that if we could. And my second comment is how does the approval process for something like Margarito Bill happen? Why wouldn't we deal with the 28 cops and having them pay for something while we're giving them the approval rather than on the tail end of the process? Great questions. So the first question, is that about the contract that's currently working out with the with the county commission, but that has nothing to do with the community center? Like I'm kind of, okay. It's the athletic field, but it's reimbursement for the athletic complex field. Do we know where we are for that? Yeah, the, uh, a lot of people care about that's why I'm at okay. okay. So that's a, that's a two-step process. First is an ordinance that takes away the requirement that we have to own a property to use that money. So that's, that's already been drafted. That's going through the process, and we should have that adopted over the holidays. The second thing would be an agreement with the, if I get the name wrong, it's, forgive me, because I think there's like five in here, Croa? Is it? So, so we have to have an agreement. We'll be negotiating an agreement with Croa to then be able to distribute the funds for the for the field. So it's still proceeding, the time yes, sir. frame is stretching. Yes, sir. No, actually, um, the board approved a what we call a statement of legislative intent, yeah, we approved that. Um, which gives us permission to work on it. So it's not being done blindly. Um, it is moving forward um, like that. I think the second question was my The favorite. second was is it? about Margarita Volcano. Oh, yeah. How, how does it, how how does does it get approved? approved? Is, does it and not just deal with the police then. Absolutely. So, so what happens is they'll come to, uh, we have like a development review committee. It's made up of all the different departments in the county. Um, and you, and you're, you're right. Um, I mean, we have the fire uh, marshal present there. Um, we've got every other discipline, even the garbage guys are there. Um, so we do take a look and make sure that everything that it's designed to do is safe. Now, as far as the operations and how many personnel um, get assigned um, to that area or what the impacts are for things like schools and the, um, the fire department or the sheriff's office, things of that nature, um, we do know what those impacts are going to be. Um, we don't have rules that say, um, by the way, for the sheriff's office, you have to pay so much as an impact fee. Um, and we do, by the way, collect a lot of the, the uh, same taxes, as the commissioner said. Um, for the fire guys, we actually do collect an impact fee. An impact fee. Yes. So an impact fee, for anybody who doesn't understand, an impact fee is to cover capital costs. 
So if a development comes in that would generate the need for, you know, so much of a fire station, so many lane miles of a road or mass transit um, requirements, we collect we collect money from each and every unit for, um, we call it mobility, which are roads and, and mass transit. Um, we collect it for parks. So that's some of the money that you've been that getting for good. the fields. <laughs> yeah. um, we collect it for emergency services, which right now is just fire, um, EMS. Um, and then we collect it for the schools. Nothing for security. But nothing for the no. sheriff's office. Not a specific really. Well, now, well, this this happens over time. So right now, we, we uh, I think we charge close to twenty one thousand dollars per house before somebody even moves in for those impact fees. Those are the part of the impact fees that is collected. They are paying. They are paying. I think the impact fees they're yeah. paying, and we increase impact fees for new development. Yeah. So yeah. all new development is paying more than what they normally pay. If we want to add an extra tax, like the fire thing you're talking about, that would have to be approved with everyone. Yeah, and and and, and you got to understand, a lot of the requirements from the sheriff's office are these folks. So. Um, Literally, eighty-eight yeah. percent of our budget goes to personnel. Yeah, so that isn't covered by impact fees. That's covered by the operations um, and your your general fund budget at this point in time. So there's different ways to collect money. But oh, by the way, even though there's six to nine million visitors coming in daily, you also have a huge real estate value coming in. So they'll be paying a lot of ad valorem taxes. So then it'll be up to, you know, and usually you collect it like a year or two after their CO because it takes a while for it to get on the tax rolls. At that time, we'll see if, in fact, the generated tax values will actually pay for enough for the sheriff's office. So he hasn't asked a question yet. No, no. So I'm glad that we're talking about the topic of impact fees. Um, earlier this year, I think it was in March, there was potential discussion about the Margaritaville complex not having to pay the impact fees for um, schools. Can you provide an update on that at all? Was that approved or rejected by the yeah. board? Yeah, well, that, that depends on what the use is. Okay. So if, if, if you're building a hotel, a commercial hotel, um, you don't pay the school impact fee. But for, uh, let me clarify, for short-term vacation rentals. Right, so if, if, if you're actually putting in a, in a rental unit, you, they have a formula that you would have to actually pay a, a rate for. Um, they would have to go to the school district to get an exemption from paying that fee. They go through the school district. Right. And so typically if it's deed restricted 55 plus no kids, the school district will give you like an exemption. But other than that, um, it may not be the full price for a single family unit or an apartment, but it's some percentage of that they have an actual fee for. And it's based on the number of kids that it's generated. So the impact fees are based on if you build it, and say I build 100 units and normally I would generate 40 kids, but short-term rental only generates 20, then you pay a little bit less than what the normal would be. But it's all based on what they actually generate. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't too. Did you have a question? I, I, oh, you did, okay. Um, Sorry. Let me, follow, let me follow up with that because I heard the same thing that this gentleman did. And I thought it was new legislation being considered to exempt more <laughs> units that are vacation rentals, condos, and so on. And that was under consideration by the commission. They were they were asking for some consideration. The school district did a study, and then they established fees based on that. So I think they gave them a, a discount based on what was actually being generated. I don't think they waived it. Okay, so they got, a, they got a reduction. Yeah, they got a reduction based on what they actually generate. So we're looking just to try to find more funding for security, and we just reduced our school funding. Yeah, but the school impact fees different. is based on the number of kids that are generated. It has nothing to do with the need for the sheriff's office. I understand. Those are very weird fees to come along because it's not just short-term rentals. It is permanent, full-time living. So when, when we look issues and, and things that, that come along with it. So they're paying from what we understand, they're paying most of the formal fees because that's one of the things we have. We want to make sure they weren't sliding under the radar as a short term rental and then next thing you know there's permanent residents living there with 
you know, 30 people in a house. Yeah, that's they've got to meet qualifications also when they say short-term rentals. They go through the school district. They've got to approve certain heights, certain things that they're not going to have, like a senior living facility. And and the school district reviews it, then decides what type of um, you know reductions, if any, they're going to give and how and why. So they justify it. So it's not just a, like that simple, it's not clear cut. Oh, I'm gonna say this is my house, but my house is a rental unit and I'm gonna pretend none of the kids there go to the school. It's not, it doesn't work that way. But I see where it could be a misunderstanding. I'm sorry, sir. So I'll, I'll give you an easy question here. Okay. I mean, this may be a code enforcement. Um, as you know, Celebration is a beautiful community, but as soon as you get out onto 192, there's graffiti on street signs and, and fencing. <laughs> How can that get changed because it affects resale value in here. If we're competing with Lake Nona, um, where are they going to go? They're you know, get out on the road and it looks terrible. Good evening. I'm Tom Wilkinson, the Chief Code Enforcement Officer for Austin County. And yes, to answer your question, West 192, like the Sheriff's Office, we have zones. We have three officers for the West 192 area. Celebration is one in that CRA area. So we have three officers. Graffiti ordinance, we have a graffiti ordinance. We cite them, give them seven days. If they don't take care of it, we can send a contractor out there to abate it and get it for its cost. Okay. So is that something that's routinely <laughs> controlled or really? Residential areas in the community, like, I don't know, a couple years ago, you used to see all the balloons and banners and all that. That's no longer permitted. Okay. That's so one of the issues. You see the new monument signs coming out there on the West Monty area. Yes. That's one of the things we work with. Dave View Height and West Monty Two beautification. We have grants available, we're, we're plugging in. Our ultimate goal with code enforcement is voluntary compliance. We do it through education. So we, I strive with the officers to let them know to make contact with everybody. Doesn't matter if it's a business owner, doesn't matter if it's a homeowner. If we can give you time to comply, I will give you as much time as I can possibly to comply. So we work with each uh, residential and property owner. Doesn't matter if it's business or commer commercial or residential. So, but we do have a minimum latency code for West 192. It is a little strict, and yes, I mean, it's a big improvement. Okay. That's a superb and slow Okay. Let me just ask if anyone has not asked a question, because now I'll go back to the people that have asked. You have not. Go ahead. Um, so thank you for coming out and going against the firing squad here. I know uh, celebration is very unique um, in some of the demands that we have. Um, just a couple of points and, and clarifications. I know, um, and I'll go to you since you're sheriff representation uh, right I, now. I um, you know, I, one thing that we always laugh about here in celebration is anytime the helicopter flies overhead, everyone goes, what the hell is going on? Let me call the non-emergency <laughs> number, which is the last thing that everyone should be doing to bother people when they're doing it. My point is, is that if the champion, if, if we're championing technology within the community, um, Orange County has their computer-aided dispatch online, and everything's ready to go. So I hope you're telling me that it's in the budget and it's coming out next month. I had a meeting uh, one month ago with an app developer to print it online. Um, we inherited an app that was... Outdated. Outdated, thank you. <laughs> uh, so that is one of the things that we have been working on. Uh, when we came to office, we've been trying to push forward more social media. Because uh, listen, uh, where I live, I hear the helicopter, I'm like, what's going on, what's going on? And so I'm always curious too, and you know, if they're really hovering over, I'll, I'll get on my computer and, and try to look it up, and I have that luxury. But it did occur to me as well that everyone should have that ability. Uh, and so that is something that we are working on. Uh, you know, one of the things that um, this past month we've been looking at is, you know, not just uh, say our Facebook account, but also going on Nextdoor, because um, that seems to be a really big uh, uh, forum for people to be able to find out about things in the community, of break-ins or things like that. Um, you, know, you are unique because you do have Jerry here, who is kind of that uh, human element that you have to be able to go and ask questions about. I'm sure Jerry would love to tell you all about the helicopters. <laughs> um, but I will say, generally those helicopters have nothing to do with celebration. It's usually flying over celebration or is along this area. Uh, but we are we are trying to move into the 21st century with a, a lot of these things. Uh, interestingly enough, when we came to office, we actually didn't own our website. Um, it was completely run by the county, so we uh, were able to update the website for the first time this year, and we're working on actually getting control of it, hopefully during this next budget cycle. Thank you. And then the, the mind, we'll correct this, and, uh, the entire everything we were doing shifted overnight. We had to add 30 plus deputies into schools. So we have a lot of great plans. The sheriff had a lot of great things lined up. And then right, head the brakes on. Because even just getting laptops for those 30 deputies ate up our entire IT budget overnight. Because we don't have 30 computers just sitting around waiting. So a lot of great stuff we were working on. 
we had to kind of shift gears. So understand that this next couple of years, once we get this SRO thing taken out, kind of, kind of flat lines finally, we, we just now literally fill all the positions. A lot of that stuff's gonna change. We'll get back on that ball, but listen, we added, we, the sheriff did what was right. He put actual SROs in the schools. A lot of counties did not do that. They're subbing it out, they're, they're putting in security guards, they're army teachers. I mean, we went hands down by far the best route. Uh, if anybody has any doubt, see me afterwards, and I'll just paint it out. But, so things are gonna kind of shift, and that was one of the things, thank you guys, because they stepped up and allowed us to do that, where Orange County, these other counties did not. So, and that's huge. I have kids here. So I've, I've been on the other end, I've been at the back scenes where things go bad, and I want, you know, trust me, we want every, school having us a hurl in it so that was huge so having him here is very huge for you guys it's a huge benefit and i mind the uh the back porch is not your source of information <laughs> 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 uh, they will put anything to be the first to report it if i don't comment on it it's probably not real okay. uh, the sheriff's office like he's talking about has our uh, has our facebook page we have websites you can always go to that uh, if you have our app on the, on the phone you'll get the notifications you'll get you can get sex offender notifications all that stuff right to you uh, we have a ride along program if you're interested to see what we do hop in an suv and ride with a deputy for a night out there on 192 it'll make your head spin um, but again anything social media wise if it's not coming from me on the back porch it's probably not real we all know how the internet and then the only the only other follow-up that I had was I know there's been a lot of talk about the command center type thing that's going in the old public's building it was my understanding that the funding from that didn't 100% come from the county commission it actually came from visit Osceola with the tourism when they when they came in to do that so, uh, we applied for a two million dollar grant from West 182 CRA right and so unlike the TDT where it's in statute they've tried to change it let me just tell you, it's not going to get changed. <laughs> the TDT is not going to go to public safety. Uh, it's just, yeah. it won't. But however, uh, under the CRA, uh, one of the things that the CRA is charged with doing is improving and maintaining the public safety of the CRA area. And so uh, what the Sheriff's Office did is we actually went before the board. Uh, the Sheriff and I gave a presentation uh, to show what we would do with the $2 million, how it would be applied, and what our vision for having that West 192 uh, office would look like. Uh, we're uh, very blessed for the West 192 board to approve that. And so that's the $2 million is the seed money for us to be able to purchase that building. So one of the things I would encourage you is with your commissioner, I know she has been uh, behind us, is getting the board to uh, actually sign the contract for that building. And then that's not the end of it. So that's a $5.5 million building roughly. Sure. But it's also gonna take about $15 million to retrofit it out into a building that we need. Now, there was a question as to why would we buy a Publix and retrofit it? The fact is, is that on a cost basis, it's much cheaper to do it that way. And to be honest with you, the location can be better for us. Yeah. Um, we like the fact that we're gonna be so close to Celebration, to Old Town, and realistically, having 417, Osceola Parkway, I-4, you couldn't have, couldn't have been better for us. So this is why we've been pushing since, uh, we actually had the first meeting in March of last year, so two months into our uh, office, you know, we targeted this site and started pushing for it. So any help you can be to get the commission to kind of fast track and, and invest that uh, $17 million into this building would be great. And just so that you know, some of the building space is going to be used for uh, the supervisor of election, so we can do voting use. Uh, we're also going to have a uh, 5,000 square foot meeting uh, meeting room, so that communities can come in and use it for anything. Uh, one of the things that I see is us doing uh, more community service out of it, as far as uh, different schools and lessons and things like that. And by having 150 personnel in the in the office, it's going to make it easier for us to have the personnel out here to be able to do more of that uh, and let me and i know that there was a question i was asked before that kind of goes with this which is uh jerry and uh, who he kind of falls under and so uh in the past year we actually moved him out from under patrol and we now have him under community services which is why we have uh, sergeant yeager and uh, lieutenant butler who are part of community services the idea behind that is that before jerry was under a patrol uh captain and so if something happened on the west 92 well, I mean, he's under a captain's job it is is to protect 192. 
And so he, he kind of had that natural pull to respond there. Well, the fact is, is that Jerry is celebration's deputy. I mean, that's really what it is. And so one of the things that with talking with Jerry and when we went through the contract with Cliff last year was what is it that we really want uh, Jerry to be doing in celebration? And that is adding to the community, being the celebration uh, deputy. And so by having him in community services, what it does, it allows him to have direct uh, communication with his sergeant and lieutenant who have other things that they can provide to the community. So for instance, when Jerry was in patrol, he didn't really have uh, you know, direct contact with our community services department. So for him to ask for something, he had to go through his chain of command. Now, Jerry, Jerry could just go, hey Heath, can I get this for celebration? It's much easier. Uh, the, the fact is, is that this is a safe area, so the connections with patrols are not as important, but having all the deputies out here for Halloween, uh, when you do the uh, Christmas out here, having more deputies out here, or being able to have um, you know, a canine unit come out to the school, or anything like that, we thought it would be uh, more advantageous for him to be under community services so that he has that direct connection and has more resources to offer to uh, Celebration. And just to finish, I wanted to specify regarding the funds from the CRA, the West CRA. Um, they're, they're collecting really great funds, but please realize the way it's being collected is not through your ad valorem taxes or anything. It's actually from the businesses that are facing 192 between Thacker and like the Four Corners area. So it's like a 15 mile stretch. They're the ones that contribute the businesses facing that contribute into the CRA. The CRA then decides their task to decide how to beautify, right, West 192 to make it uh, safer, more attractable, better for this, uh, not just tourists, but also the businesses and the residents because they collect that from those businesses. So hence, there is the money that, the $2 million that was provided for that budget to set aside actually came from the businesses that face the core. So I think that's important to, to let you guys know because sometimes you think everything has to come out of our pot, but this was one pot that it kind of, it did help. Now the other thing that the West 492 wants to do in the future, because hopefully uh, as we grow, their pot of money will also grow because the businesses will begin to contribute more. As that happens, they want to do more than just the monument signs, perhaps just that station. In the future, they also want to bring down the um, poles, right, the power lines and all that. Underground, they want to make it more, uh, they just want to make it, I, I guess, more better, you know, nicer looking and all that stuff and safer and those, those things. Um, they, their conversations have been about different types of ideas of what they can do with the border. And so it's good if you all want to learn more of what they're doing. They have monthly meetings at O-Town for the most part. Um, and it's the first week, I believe, uh, the first week of every month. And I could get you more information if you want it. But I encourage you to go and see because that's money that is collected by the, all of these players there on the corridor. And they do want to see all of your entry points of communities looking better. Celebration being one of the, one of the, one of the ones right in the heart of it. So it would be great for you folks to go if you'd like to learn more about it. Just thought I should throw it out there. Their website does have their full study and plan, oh, there you go, yeah. which is actually really helpful. Um, so definitely check that out. Definitely. Okay, anyone that did not ask a question that wants to ask a question. Yes. Um, we all are concerned that uh, celebration maintains its beauty, but I think the Sheriff's Department needs a closer working relationship with the community standards group here. Uh, my house was burglarized, the next door was burglarized, the four corners were burglarized. So I put up a motion sensor light uh, to shine on the dark garage alleyway. And four years later, the community standards people come to me and say, oh no, we didn't approve that. Uh, I don't know what planet these people were born on, but the reality is in crime prevention, part of it is preventing crime by making areas less suitable for criminals to come into. So uh, I understand community standards is worried about making sure the grass is cut there's enough mulch and you have your lights the way they want them. But we also need to have, I think, a better working relationship. So I understand that part of crime prevention is also having sufficient lighting in areas to deter, uh, so, deter people. So, Here's the, here's the other good thing about having Jerry over community services. It's about half of community services is what? 
we're all we're all step debt certified, prime provincial for environmental design. So that's, we're state certified in that. So we, I'll be more than happy to meet with you. If you are 100 percent right, you know, you got to you got to design out prime. It's an engineering perspective. The light is the light, and barking dogs are the number one, number two to turn for prime in the store. So. Um, yeah, it, we, that's it. We need to sit down. He's certified. We're all certified in that. So we'll be more than happy to talk on that at some point. Sit down. Um, but you should not be getting penalized for, for light. But there is, there is. And, and so the solution is this: is that we're here. You know Jerry. Uh, you now know that Jerry has a team behind him. So the big thing is always: you just need to let us know. Get us involved. Well, one thing we have, and I've probably mentioned a dozen times I've written about it, is we do free security surveys of your house. <clears throat> Call it up, I'll schedule it, myself, one of the other crime prevention officers, we'll come out to the house, we'll look around the house. A lot of the things are, are maintenance related, and we're not, we don't work for the ARC across the office. <laughs> uh, a lot of the things are, are maintenance related, and we can point out that, we can give you a lot of suggestions and, and things of, of ways to help eliminate the, the crime that might occur at your house. Uh, I've worked with ARC across the, the hall. I had a lady in North Village who got one of those nasty gram letters uh, about a camera that she put up. The only thing ARC said, well, we didn't know about that. She came down here, filled out the application, it was approved, and she was out the door. So it, it could be simple as, as getting their approval or maybe looking at a recommendation. Again, every case is going to be different. But for, and so what I would say is that maybe by involving us, then that board will actually approve whatever it is that they need. Well, we can, and, 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 we they need an education, and that's, yeah. and that's what a lot of this is, is going to be education. Right. So you ne you have the t you have Jerry at your disposal for that, and you now have the rest of community services to be able to access those needs. Yeah, because you're, you're, there's probably 40 people in here out of what, 10 to 12,000 that care? Let's be honest, that what kind of percentage is that out of 10,000 people? So you're the ones, we'll help everybody, but you're the ones we want to make sure are really take care of because you guys care because you're here. So. <laughs> Honestly, right? Take the time to come down, or the other 9,000 in. So, I wrote my address on the sheet. <laughs> my address is on the sheet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Uh, I got no problem if it's crime related. If you put a big spotlight in front of your house, you know, you know, I wouldn't want that next to You've got the Jerry Bat signal with the picture of his face in the air. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. I totally want to see that. Just schedule that survey. Because you're a business owner, you're a business owner. You're a business owner. You're a business owner. I don't want that to go unheard. So if you do own a business, you know we do do that program for business as well. So if you're a business owner, if you know someone who's a business owner, it's not just for residential, it's for business as well. Because unfortunately, businesses have uh, you know, break-ins as well. Yes. Okay, so anyone else that did not ask a question? And now we do. Thank you for your patience. I just want to make sure I get that. This one, those times I keep the living from code enforcement. I know I've got code enforcement directors here as well. <laughs> However, uh, managing the condo community, we do have a particular owner that we've got a problem with, with Airbnb. And I know that for celebration as a whole, that is an issue because no short term rental is allowed at all. And my condo community is also one where it's not short term rental. It is, you know, maximum two leases in a 12 month period. So, which is slightly different to the rest of the pro celebration where it has to be one lease per 12 months. So my question to you is, what is the county's position on enforcement of anybody or an owner that potentially is using their condo or home as an Airbnb? Well, to be honest, one of those is very hard to prove because a lot of them do it on the internet and they only do it by Facebook or something like that. If we go out there and if we try to solicit them, they don't respond to us. We have to work with Jerry and Sheriff's Office a couple of times. Okay, why? Well, yeah. But we will, we will, if you could. I have my card back here. Or if okay. I will after me, I'll get with you. All and right. We'll look into it because you, the celebration is a PUD and I don't know the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the okay, plan, sorry, then plan we development. Plan development. Plan yeah. development, that's what a PUD is. For those who don't know, it's plan development. And I don't know the conditions of your PUD right now. Yeah, because I spoke to um, 
I had spoken with a book with Tony and, and Susan on the crawl, and crawler, but it's just sort of as a, because it was one that, you know, I know Jerry says don't look at the back porch, however, it was through the back porch <laughs> that established the complaint that I had from another owner who lived below, who lives below this particular condo of this constant backwarding and forwarding, and he even spoke to the people going, oh, so you're here, you know, you're new, oh no, I'm only here for the weekend. I, I rented it out on Airbnb and somebody else within celebration uh, was able to find it for me and sure enough there was it and so you know Monday it was all to call before you leave them out to get your okay. Okay. and it is a little bit difficult with the Airbnb oh, I know. Um, we've I had understand. actually and let me tell you I've it's all over district one um, reunion has some of those issues my community I live in um, Indian Ridge Indian Oak all those communities have the same issues with next door they're partying because they're an Airbnb and you don't even know it till they're partying and then you've got to call up. It's a, it becomes, it is a big problem. And I can tell you, I myself, I've met with representatives with Airbnb hoping to, for them to, for us to have to come into an agreement because right now there is no agreement with platforms such as Airbnb because there are other platforms that are doing the same and kind of like, you know, <laughs> do, uh, renting the homes and so forth. And we've been trying to come up with a contract. Uh, the county commission actually mentioned it already to our county auditor. Our auditor, our auditing department sometimes get complaints and they go ahead and investigate to see if whether or not they're on the internet and they do different things like that. If a person is discovered or they admit it, then our uh, auditing department, our code enforcement, they go after them. So one, um, they have to pay the tourist tax, right? Because <laughs> then they're not paying taxes. Um, and also make sure that they have the business license so that then they, we could hold them accountable for things. And code enforcement makes sure those types of things. So we've, we're dealing with Airbnb issues and platform like that issues. It's almost like when Uber first came around you know, to different states. Um, I think as technology progresses, we're gonna have to deal with a lot of these issues. But um, I'm hoping that, our, that we could reach a deal with these type of platforms so that one, we could hold the owners accountable uh, when they're not doing things they're not supposed to, too, and they shouldn't be doing business in places they're not supposed to. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, this is the, it's just finding out where the county right. can help, not yeah, only and myself and the, as a manager of a condo association, but also for the celebration board as a whole. Because again, you know, we are, we are limited in what we need that we can do, and it's something that we need to work. We will help in every with the county to try and help. Obviously, yeah. proof is everything. But yeah. You know, but we will help okay, every way we so can. Far, municipalities, just like you're talking about, have done deals with Airbnb and being on Pro when we're doing that. There's, this is something that I think we can get some help with the county, but if, if Celebration as a whole does not allow these kind of rentals, Airbnb has actually marked, blocked those things off on their website for certain counties, for certain, certain municipalities, and it's gone to them and said that we don't do this. So, they, so a person in Celebration cannot actually book in Celebration. So we probably need CROA and the county's coordinate, uh, coordinate and send something to Airbnb, something legally, uh, and they will actually block that. They've done that across the country in many areas and asked them to say, it's not legal to do it in this area. So they've actually done that. In other places, they've actually collected the, 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 uh, the bed tax for you know for the counties and other stuff like that in certain cities. But if it's not legal, then they will actually do that if we probably work together and kind of work on the process. Yeah, and I'm happy to do that. I think we're all talking the same language. Right. Um, at the end of the day, it's about making sure they're following rules like all of us. That That's the end of the day. I can tell you that I've had some reservations from Airbnb on their side just because I said, hey, you're a platform, I get it, you're making money, this is what you do, but we need to put restrictions in. I've, I've even said, hey, when they say Osceola, can a window pop up and they need to put in their business number? That way, if they do that, they know they can't rent in Celebration or wherever else it's restricted, and importantly, that we can track them and know who they are. Um, but they weren't really willing to do that. So we've got to have, we're going to continue having these conversations with Airbnb. But uh, also know they're a private company. If they close doors, that's where we have a, a, a disconnect. You see what I mean? So I'm more than happy to sit with you folks and see what, what we could come up with, bring it to my board. And if my board all agrees the majority, then let's go ahead and present it to Airbnb and see what they say. And of course, the majority of celebration, if they want to not do this, because again, all your residents would have to say no, you don't want half and half, because that would not help me make a decision. It would have to be the majority saying they don't want any Airbnb in celebration and then go from there. But I'm happy to sit down and have further conversation on that. Um, any other questions? It could be from a repeat offender of questions. <laughs> go ahead. One quick question. 
on the note the gentleman made over here yeah. about putting the light up on the garage. And Jerry comes out and he looks at it, goes to ARC, it's approved. Okay? Okay. Watch. Why what? Why is he doing that? Why are we it's redundancy? Lights are on the other houses. Ringtones are on the other houses. Why do I have to go to the ARC and sign it over again? Because they said so. Because they said so, right. That's it. They want to know what's going on in the crowd. No, they want to know what's going on. We're, pro we're, we're very pleased to say that that's not one of our issues. I see a lot of redundancy, and that really annoys me. Yeah, but that's something you can talk to your yeah, I know. Uh, your folks about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, we have a new village uh, that's going to be built in celebration, the Island Village. I think most of us know about this. So. I'm curious, first of all, will this just become part of Jerry's route? If he's going to have to do that as well, or will there Is it part of the CCD? CCD, yes. Yes, correct. Okay, so, so can then he get a raise or something? He's going to have to work have to pack a yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, listen, uh, you know, we'll, maybe we'll give him a, an extra farce of the trip is a little nicer. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, he, you know, he's, he is appointed to you guys. Okay. Um, I met with the uh, management company, I want to say, uh, two weeks ago to talk about uh, the contract and kind of what Jerry's role can be. And, and really what it is, it's, it's about, you know, him working with you all for your needs. And so when you bring on this whole new development, then that's going to need to be part of his route because it's part of the CCDD. Um, and so re realistically, that's it. But the hope also is that you all are not just growing. This entire west side is growing. That's why uh, we've asked for and hopefully by the uh, you know, January, February, we're going to bring a, a new squad on for patrol so that you will see more and more of us deputies or more of the deputies in the area. And then also, you know, having that uh, west office there, I'm not saying that the deputies are going to be stopping at that mobile station, but if you can imagine having 150 personnel at that office, the number of vehicles coming and going at all hours of the day, um, just having that visual presence. presence is a huge thing. And that's partly why we wanted that, um, that specific location. Now, the other thing I, I try to tell people is that, you know, uh, deputies really like to eat. And so uh, they, they, they go to lunch. They go to dinner. Uh, and, uh, but, and, and I joke, but what's going to happen is you've got 150 people there who, who have to eat. And so where are they going to go to eat? And so uh, I know that if I had a little bit of extra time, I may come down to celebration and you know eat down here in downtown. Or any, you know, the Chick Fil A. Uh, I definitely would probably be there a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think that it's not just that you know, oh, I'm gonna have more deputies. It's the intangibles of we're gonna be adding 150 people who are spending money in this community at least on lunch, and you know, maybe they're gonna do some shopping at the Publix or whatnot or wherever. So I think you're gonna see a larger imprint on that as well. And so. Are there other um, aspects of what the county is doing that you can share with us about the Island Village? Are they set to go? Are there other things being talked about or discussed? Yeah. 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 Well, ben can tell you all about their plans. I can tell you that we've been issuing infrastructure permits, so you can go ahead and uh, go ahead, Ben. Go, go ahead. ahead and uh, give me a crash party. It's okay. <laughs> Do you, need, do you need a microphone? Here, why don't you come on up? You can do it right up here. <laughs> Tell them all about it. We can use a break up here. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, and hopefully uh, also uh, uh, representatives from um, uh, Crowa and all that are, are also letting you, everybody know what's going on. We, Manami Homes, I'm, my name is Bennett Ruiz. I'm with Manami Homes. Uh, we are building Island Village. Uh, about 1,300 total units there. 300 of it are going to be apartment, 1,000 are going to be uh, single family, townhome, a mix of that. Uh, we've been working with uh, many of the uh, members here with uh, CROA. Uh, we've created a uh, ad hoc group uh, that includes a uh, few members of the board, a uh, few members from the management company, actually both management companies, both with uh, CROA as well as the CDD 
uh, management company, and a few from, uh, well, and a few, and a, a couple of other people from the CDD as well, the Celebration CDD, not necessarily the uh, Enterprise CDD. Uh, they're just utilities in, our, in, in everybody's minds. Uh, also, we have, uh, he was just here, uh, Jeffrey Mallon's on, on that ad hoc group as well. Uh, we've been communicating, Manami and that, that group has been communicating, trying to let everybody know exactly where we are with the plans. Uh, I can give you the latest up to the minute type of stuff today, right now. Uh, we are in the process of trying to move forward with the roadway uh, construction. Uh, it's about a mile worth of road that goes from the Celebration High School all the way out to the what we call the front door of the actual community. Uh, that is the roadway plans that is not yet the, the bridge plans, which we are trying to uh, process separately with the county, uh, but that the roadway plans have been approved and allows us to start construction. We're hoping to start soon. We're trying to get out of our own way. Uh, and uh, one of our goals was uh, next Monday we would start, but I don't know if that's actually gonna happen. Uh, we still have a few things that we have to do in county to do uh, pre-construction meetings and, and well, pre-construction meetings, not only with the county, but with other jurisdictions like uh, the school district. Uh, we want to get with the CDDs. Uh, you know, let's let everybody know, hey, here's what's about to happen, uh, from at least from a jurisdictional level. Uh, we're also trying to plan, we're don't, not promising yet, but we're trying to plan a ceremonial groundbreaking, uh, which will likely occur after we actually groundbreak. Uh, we just want to clean up a little bit before you know, we have some, uh, some folks like the county, like the commissioners, uh, out there uh, to uh, to help celebrate the the start of a new phase uh, out there. Uh, as it relates to the actual community uh, plans, uh, we recently submitted that into the celebration company for review, and that was about a week ago or so. We've been through many, many, many iterations, more than I'd like to count. But uh, unfortunately, uh, that's mostly again, man, we trying to get out of our own way. Uh, but uh, we are we have submitted them to uh, the celebration company for a review and we're waiting to see how what that review says and hopefully with a favorable review or with a review that says uh, this looks good please continue to proceed hopefully at that point we are looking to plan another town hall meeting related to island village alone so that uh, we could address most of the issues or answer a lot of the questions that uh, uh, that I'm sure everybody will have before we take it to <laughs> your process uh, with the Board of County Commissioners and uh, hopefully um, you know we could all be uh, you know on the same page at that point. I was at a meeting uh, I think that other town hall and one of the things we talked about was a um, bridge that's going to be over a creek or something and there was a there was an issue about the fact that the the roadway which is two lanes in either direction narrows down to one lane in each direction going over the bridge has that been resolved anymore or is it still still that way or it is still that uh, that condition yes uh, two lanes uh, from the high school to the front door of the community of the of the village uh, which is you know, Celebration Boulevard is a four-lane section as it stands now, and our section that we are building is going to be a two-lane uh, section uh, from the high school over the bridge through the river. There's no change to that at the moment. Yes. Pat, just for the sake of clarity for everybody, you're not building the school. You are building the Island Village community, but the county is building the school, the school board, so that you don't get in a Well, to, to help uh, Commissioner uh, Chowdhury out here, uh, they are not building the school either. It's the it's school, school district building yeah, the school. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Think, yeah. Yes, but yes, we, uh, Manami Homes is donating the land. Wow, but there's a deal going on that's been there with uh, since the Celebration Company struck a deal with them, with the school district. And we are just picking up from behind that, uh, made some few modifications to the, to the agreement, and, and away we go. So. Did you have a last question? Yeah. You just mentioned, Ben, the, uh, the front door. There was a rumor running around that there was going to be a back entrance. What is going on with that reunion? Is that true, or 
Mandate's position is that we don't want that back entrance. I hope so. What is, what is the county saying about that? There will eventually be a connection out to that road. Oh, um, it's called uh, Osceola Polk Line Road. Really? Yeah. So you're going to connect. He doesn't you? have enough problems as it is. Without <laughs> <laughs> so having a back entrance going out into the 429 where people can get in and out of here. Like a shopping but you can also get the fire station down on Osceola Folk Line Road in and yeah, there's some the other access. Well, um, we, it's almost time, so I'm going to take can one I more. follow up? You, you can't leave that when you can get the first line on the back porch. Okay. We were told, as Coroa, that there would not be a back door. This would be new information entirely. Yeah. So how did you get that done? What do you mean? How do we? Get how, how, how did you come up with the idea of putting another entrance to the back without Crow knowing or anybody else knowing? How did you do that? I don't know what you mean by how did we do it without you knowing. We don't know. Did you know that there was going to be? No, I, I mean I, I'm trying to ask. I, I'm trying to be emotional. I'm just saying yeah. we working with Ben and other people. Are all this process has been told there was no back door. The only thing that was going to be was construction of the road to the process of construction yeah. everybody understood yeah, that it was going to be closed off. I mean, just, just because it will make the airwaves and move it, immediately this is over, are you saying there's going to be a real road or just this construction road? No, actually, um, you'll probably get construction and emergency entrance immediately um, in, sometime in the future because Madame's not going to be building it apparently. Um, but. But at the end of the day, in the future, there will be a connection down to um, Osceola Folk Miner. For emergency vehicles only? No. No, no. no initi initi initially it will probably be for emergency vehicles, but it will eventually grow into a connection. No, plus, yeah, plus that keeps there. Yeah, it's been a while. I think the point is that's the first we're hearing about. That's the first one we're hearing. That's the very first time we're hearing about. First, first, first thing we're just saying, first it was not going to happen. Now you're saying it's, it's not going to happen. happen. So who's approved that? Oh, this this was approved a while back, but but you never told us who by who? Well, the county. It's part of their comprehensive plan. We have no say in. Well, we have no say in that. Well, I'm sure you'll have a lot of say in it as it well, goes. You're on. getting it right now, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think. Well, so so if Madame e, um, builds their development and doesn't have it, they're required to do certain things with the road to make sure that we can get access in. Um, in the future, sometime in the future. Um, and it may be 10 years from now, um, uh, there there would be a connection at some point to, to uh, connect it. We were told differently. Yeah. We were the issue is you're building a two-lane road, and it will not be sufficient for the 10-year future traffic. So here's the issue. You haven't planned far enough strategically for the fact that if you're saying you're going to have a back door, the front door isn't big enough to, to provide throughput for the supposed traffic which is now a surprise to the celebration population yeah i'm not so sure just by connecting it out to Osceola the folk line road you're going to get a ton of extra traffic oh, 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 Obviously, obviously, we, we need some more information on that. So what I'll do, <laughs> so what I'll do is I'm going to find out when this was already adopted. Apparently, it was a while ago. I wasn't. I have no idea when. Okay, so I'll have to get the date. Uh, see when that road was adopted and see exactly how things are going to work, and then we'll have to have a separate meeting on just that. And I'll bring in the staff with all information. And then we'll see where it is in the process, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Is that a deal? Because I, I will come back and have a meeting about it, uh, but we need to get a lot more information on it first. And again, I don't know what you guys have been told and what you haven't been told by the different departments or by the by the organizations here. I don't have no idea, but let's go ahead and. Crow doesn't know about it. We don't know about it. They're the people that should know about it, and you didn't tell them. Well, that's exactly why I'm suggesting. That's something that was passed a long time ago that perhaps was not conveyed, that we should convey it, and we'll have to have a separate meeting on that, okay? So we'll have a meeting on that for sure. Okay, so I wanted to, I, it's too bad we're ending on a high note this way, but 
I want to thank you all, obviously, for coming today and for being here. And we're going to try to do another uh, meeting, of course, soon enough. I do have town halls, and members of CROA actually attend them sometimes. So I would love for you guys to attend it. Uh, come to the town halls and tell me about your concerns. And this being one of them, we could have been addressing it today. But we'll address it in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.